Well, I have sprinklers on my vines, as you see here. The reason I put those on is I had crews from California come over to put these initial vines on. And um, there's no none on this because typically this is a, a late bloomer after spring frost and all. But if they start to push their grapes, and that's the first thing that vines will do, they will, um, they will freeze, and that's your crop. We're leaving, in some circumstances, more cuttings, and the reason we're doing that is we want to take the stronger of whatever going. Mm -hmm. um, we'll prune our whites, like our Sauvignon Blanc and everything, very different. We'll take into account that maybe the spring frost in all is coming. So it seems mm -hmm. easy, but it's not all easy. Now let's mm -hmm. say like this last summer, we had some heat index days. Now our heat index days here are more like over 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. And a funny thing about grapes is our harvest is between August and the middle of October. And why is that? Because I have so many different varietals. Mm -hmm. This varietal pushes later than the whites do rather than they all push at different times and all when it gets above a hundred degrees and it stays above a hundred degrees for more than like one day the grapes will stop producing mm -hmm. sugar so what's your weather like up here you guys uh, um typically our summers are in um, low 90s mid 90s okay do you you do get some hundreds like mm -hmm. day after day yes. a couple and of I have to, and I have to watch it. Do you put and the sprinklers on? And when I do, on? if I, no, I won't. Well, I if I know we're getting there, I can yeah. put the sprinklers on. Yeah. But it depends on uh, the first. barometers <laughs> and how much moisture is in the air <laughs> because okay. we deal with something called mildew also. What's, what's, what's more uh, sensitive, whites or reds? Mm. To what? Just temperature. <laughs> Your temperature um, they beer. all, they so, all. Uh, that's why you can't in Phoenix. So original, if you're going to plant grapevines mm -hmm. in yeah, Phoenix, I, yeah, find, find a wall that will get morning sun but does not get afternoon, afternoon sun okay, okay. and then make sure that um you know typically you'll find because it's cooler you know in that area yeah. but you might actually have to mist the ground okay. to have that moisture come up but try to keep the grape grapes themselves the clusters okay. dry why because of mildew mm -hmm. you know okay. mildew. we don't typically have mildew yes sir <clears throat> I would take this whole thing off, say this one, because it's stronger and it's newer and it's closer to the core. Yeah. Okay. And then the same, and so that would, this. yeah, this whole thing would come off, that right. whole mode. Then this one, I would keep, and yeah, that's, that is dead. No, you're not. Uh, very, yo, very that's dead. That I would come cut off. this, that could come off. this and I would cut yeah. down to here. Okay. Right. Because this looks stronger. Yeah, that's you know, why, and it's, close, and it's closer and the, to the cordon. But I keep this one, on this one, I cut this, yep. I cut that, and I keep this, and I cut this down so it's... Uh, although, yes. although, although it's starting to, you know, it's one of those, do you keep this one and cut this one off? I'd go ahead and keep both of them for right okay, now. Okay, for now we'll just keep Cut it right there, and, we'll and probably out. cut this down to one bud. Okay, gotcha. Because if we will, most likely, we'll cut on this. And then this would take off the back one and do two. Yeah. This comes Barbara, off. what's your watering suggestions in, in, in Phoenix area? In Phoenix? Okay. Well, well, you look at these, and these have a drip system. Uh -huh. You don't want, um, grapevines do not do well in a flood irrigation zone. I mean, grapevines has to be the best farming product okay. for Arizona. Why is that? Deep root system holds the soil, keeps the soil from eroding, but also it uses very little water. On these vines here, we'll almost stress them to death, you know, in mm -hmm. the summertime. Why is that? Because we want them to pull all that flavor from this wood. Right. They're gonna take all that energy that's stored up in this wood mm -hmm. and pull it into the grapes. And so having fewer grapes, like if you were doing commercial, this is nothing like this you would keep everything you would want yeah. every single grape going why mm -hmm. because it's liquid. production production yeah, it's liquid, it's yeah. liquid. Yeah. you know they can add things to it we don't add sugar we don't add essences or anything it's a hundred percent great and and as you can tell i am a farmer this is very um which is why your wine tastes a little better 
<laughs> funny thing, a funny thing about bag. that. What I got on mine is I got a, a ten hour, t a ten gallon an hour drip on mine. Okay. How many grape vines? Uh, sixty. Sixty. Right. Uh, starting kind? at uh, starting at two years and going up to three. Okay. What kind of grape? Uh, I got one. I got fifteen plants of the Thompson seedless for just for eating. Oh, for just right. for eating. Right. But then I got the Spanish blood. Okay. Right. And I got. You got them from a Costco. No, I did not get it from Costco. Okay. I got it from uh, a vineyard in uh, in Georgia. It's good. The Willis Vineyard. Okay. Right. Um. Uh. Yeah. On eating grapes, you can give them lots of water. Yeah. Yeah. But I, what I'm no. What I'm saying. Um, I'm, but, I'm but you do want to take some of the fruit off of it, and especially with eating grapes in Phoenix, you know, you get the leaf hoppers and the white the yeah. white flies well, and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Oil soap spraying them once a week. Right. Great. I'm not too much worried about them because they're established. Yeah. It's my new ones on my, you know, my Spanish blood that I'm worried about. Worried about what? Well, I want to know how much water to give. And this is my. I'd pull this one over. Hey, how about on this side? Pull one of these over. I'll yeah. take that one. You want that one? There's your first that vine, one. Emily. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this I'll come back. Um, with a bundle. And I bury the whole thing. Right. No, right side up. No, right side that was something else. <laughs> yeah, it, it, oh. it would probably do it, but it just would work harder. Got it. To get the thing should, I, should I do it in a bundle or just one? I think you just do it one at a time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where? Still nice and green. Figure out. We're going to put it in a pot. Oh, that is This is our irrigation. Now, why do we have so many wires here? When these start growing, these are movable wires. Okay. Once the grapes are on, yeah. and once you're starting to de develop your leaf system, the grapes ripen through their leaves. Okay, um, they'll pull the flavors from here if they don't have nourishment. So the canopy management is very important. So after doing something like this, we're going to go back, and we're going to. You want to try it? Sure. Come on, you can I'm take on this line. <laughs> See, this line here, you know, uh, it's looking like it's more of a one. You've got one, two. I remember that. Two. Was, uh, secret it's boss getting pretty or whatever. Undercover here. boss show. So you cut and this it was off. somebody from one of the wineries. You cut CEO this. This doesn't look like it's going to make it, but it's still green. And, and the guys uh, the no, you still him, go your two buds. And the boss goes, So go ahead and cut and just, right up oh, here. It's okay. And okay. okay. Behind it, yes. That vine, there's two years growth right there. There's two years growth. <laughs> oh my word. How do you well, tell, how do you tell them? Soil at all times. Mm -hmm. It will come back. You know, Don't worry, yeah, but it's two years down the and road. And then when the leaves well, are on, they'll have little pedials. Right. And you take those and have them tested because those pedials is going to tell you what the what right. is pulled out of the ground and what it's okay. lacking. All right. And, and, and it's, it's Number two. Yeah. Want to keep About a thousand small. more, and you, I know. Then you can, yeah, you, you can do so, small things. Um, she just wanted the long ones too. Do they plant around 900 vines per acre? Uh, I think that's about right. Mm -hmm. I know they just planted a bunch of acres so last year. How many are in this little? This. Oh, this is like two. It's like so two acres. Coming, I would leave one and a half right acres. Here. It's not a lot. I remember what we said we were going to do. We were going to take yeah. this off. I'll leave it out. Yeah. Yeah. You can cut it down to this budget. <laughs> because that one's closer. You, know, to, you want to keep it close uh, to the trunk, close to the cordon. Keep, you want to keep it close to the cordon because this is what yeah. supports what, the weight right. of the vines. And so the answer is, is if you, you know, each one of these nodes it keeps getting further and further out. Now it's like it's right. going to support the plant. And the vine will direct its energy to whatever is close. To the closest ones. That's why the tips are well, always we'll smaller. Get it later. Okay. I mean, we've so, had vines um, that you know they didn't come through and prune. I know you guys have missed stuff. Year, but uh, and be it's go ahead, long honey. Uh, you really can't. No. Come here. You can't <laughs> hurt it. You want to see tough yes, luck? And this is where <laughs> I'm going to plant another vine because it's oh, missing a spot. You're missing a vine. Okay. <laughs> so we've got here this one. I'm going to move this over this way. Mm -hmm. So we start another arm. Okay. Yeah, that's right. About three feet between trunks. Uh, there's actually five feet. Five Should we feet. save that one? We can. 
it um and typically we'll bring the big chompers and we'll cut this other stuff off mm -hmm. we'll go through and cut all that stuff so it's easier to get down here so we go straight on this one mm -hmm. right slant. and then slant on that one and you can see it's still alive uh, yeah see how it's green and these will stay alive for a long time so we're looking and we've got them. this one we're gonna pull over this way so because we're gonna make this bilateral right i'm getting some automatics or whatever <laughs> see so and see how bendable they are yeah i'm not going to cut they don't. i'll cut this here this point because we're looking one two three four five six okay so one, that's seven, the bottom two, of it three, four, the bottom's five, always cut straight six. the top is cut slanted Diagonal. Yes. So we'll put these together and we can cut all this off. See the buds? Mm -hmm. That's where the grapes are going to come out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really incredible. So you guys, if you're just putting it into just doing five or six as plants and different things like that, and these are great grapes. Mm -hmm. They are so delicious. We'll go ahead and I'll bundle a bunch of these up. And I typically will bundle about 50 of them up together. I'll tie them. I'll mark them. I'll stick them in a hole with some compost and, and some root stimulant and everything else like that. They'll be about that far under the ground, totally under the ground, but they'll be upside down. Why are we doing that? Because when the roots come, they'll be going all different directions. And when I put them right up and take these roots off, they'll be out. Mm -hmm. They'll form that canopy. Planting them. Grapevines, I keep telling you, are like weeds. There are certain things, basic things you need to know about them, but when you plant them, we get, no when yeah. we plant these uh, rootstock, which we got according to our dirt, mm -hmm. uh, we got the varietal, the top part of it, according to our weather. So when we plant it, um, We'll dig a hole, we'll put the vine in, the roots will be going down, we'll put some dirt in, we'll pull it up, that forms that cone around the root, making that root go down, and then we fill it up. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And why do we not use fertilizer on it? Well, because we got the rootstock according to this dirt. Right. If you offer a baby milk or candy, what are they going to take? The Baby's going to take candy. <laughs> two year old will take candy. The baby's probably still going to want milk. Oh, two mm. year old is the baby to me. <laughs> toddler. <laughs> okay. If you offer the toddler a carrot or a lollipop, okay, yeah. which one do you think they're going to take? Depends on how they were raised. Yeah. So it'll just manifest itself around that fertilizer and it'll get used to that fertilizer. Why should it go mm -hmm. in uh, any other direction? Yeah, right. You've spoiled it. You spoiled it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that's why a lot of people, some people will get growing in um, in containers, mines that are in some dirt. Mm -hmm. Really stupid to do. <laughs> in Barbara's opinion, <laughs> not everybody. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to 